Sometimes the question comes up that when the Buddha listed the Four Noble Truths, why did he list the cessation of suffering before the path to the cessation of suffering? The answer is in the Third Noble Truth. He's not simply stating the fact that there is a cessation, but he's also stating a principle. The cessation comes when you develop dispassion for the cause of suffering. In other words, you have to attack suffering at the cause, which is the craving that leads to becoming, craving for sensuality, or becoming, non-becoming. Once the Buddha established that principle, then he lists the factors of the Eightfold Path as the Fourth Noble Truth. That then, of course, leads to the next question, which is actually more important. How does the Four Noble Truth attack the cause of suffering? How does it attack craving? How does it help us develop dispassion for craving? And the two most important factors in the path in this regard are right view and right concentration. Because right view points out that the objects of the craving that would lead to becoming, the five aggregates, if you cling to them and crave them, they're going to be suffering. Why is that? Because they, they're fabricated, and you're holding something fabricated. But there's also suffering, the fact that it's not worth holding on. That's what you have to see. It's a value judgment that you're going to have to make. And you have to convince yourself that that's true. You can hear right view again and again and again. But if you haven't tested it, it's not going to have the effect that the Buddha wanted. And the fact that you want, if you really in intend on practicing. And that's why we have to develop right concentration. Because it's in seeing that this is the best state of becoming you can create out of those five aggregates. And yet it's not good enough. Ultimately, the effort is not worth it. In the meantime, it is worth it, but there will come a point where it's not worth it anymore. That's the point we have to bring the mind to. Because after all, the path as a whole is created out of aggregates. There has to come a point in the practice where you've developed a path, and you have to let that go. Otherwise, you're still holding on, you're still clinging, and you're still going to be suffering. So we work on developing concentration, trying to get as good as possible. And this is why we develop a passion for the path even though we're trying to develop dispassion for the aggregates. We have to substitute our passions for other things with a passion for the path, a passion for the practice, a passion for concentration. You want to do this really well, as well as you can do it. And John Swett would repeat instruction again and again. Don't just go through the motions. Don't play around with this. Try to do this as well as you can. That's the quality of ardency and the mindfulness that goes into concentration. You really want to put your whole heart into it. And you want to develop the right resolve that goes along with this that says that you want to focus on a happiness that doesn't involve sensuality and doesn't involve harm to anybody. Where are you going to find that? Well, in concentration. And all the other factors of the path contribute to this. Right effort tries to generate the desire to do this well. So if you're sitting here just kind of dallying around with the breath a little bit, then wandering off and entertaining yourself with something else, then coming back, the path isn't going to have its effect. Because you have to prove to yourself on the one hand that this is the best thing the mind can create. It's the best state of becoming you can have the mind in concentration. And you have to see at the same time the extent to which you have fabricated it. That's where right view comes in to keep reminding you. When the mind settles down in a nice state of concentration, it's not there free. In other words, it's not there without effort. Even when you get really good at it and it begins to seem more and more effortless, there is the effort that goes into maintaining it. 
And for a long time he said, well, it's just a minor effort, it doesn't require that much, and the rewards are great. But you have to keep asking yourself, could there be something better? Where is the stress here? Where is the effort that goes into maintaining this? Is there something that doesn't require that effort? That's the question that Right View keeps asking as you try to get the mind into concentration. So do your best, because that's what makes the path work, by having a passion for doing it. Because what the Buddha is doing, he's trying to wean you off all your other types of passion by substituting this one for the time being. And all the elements that can go into motivating you, a sense of heedfulness that you really need to do this well, a sense of compassion for yourself, a sense of pride in your craftsmanship. And John Lee has a nice comment on this. He says, there are only four jhanas. We still can't catch them by the head or the tail, he says. There are people who can run corporations that have thousands of workers or run farms that have thousands of acres. We have only four jhanas. Doesn't that make you embarrassed if you can't get them down? So have some pride in what you're doing. And try to really do this well. Because it's in the element of putting your whole heart into it that you'll be able to prove to yourself, yes, this is as good as it gets. And yet Fabrication can take you only so far. And that's when the mind will begin to incline to something unfabricated. Up to that point, it's happy to content itself with fixing its concentration meal for the evening and saying, well, that's good enough. As the Buddha once said, the secret to his awakening was one that he would not let up in his effort, and two, as he never let himself rest content with skillful qualities. In other words, no matter how good his skills got, if they could be better, he was going to try to develop that higher level of skill. So set high standards for yourself. You never hit higher than you aim, so aim high. I think of the Buddha's words about, if you really love yourself, this is what you do. You follow the path. You stick with it, regardless. But it requires doing your best. That's what makes the path work. That's how it attacks the cause of suffering. Because otherwise the mind keeps thinking, well, this is good enough. Or it doesn't get any better than this, so I might as well not try. With that attitude, it's never going to make the leap. Because we're so used to the things that the mind puts together that the idea of finding happiness in something that's not put together is a little scary. But when you push put together things to their limit and see that it's still not good enough, That's when things open up in the mind.